Oh boy, here they come. Here they come. Oh, 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 oh. told you how much I enjoy these early morning walks of ours. Yes, Dad. There's nothing quite like the morning constitutional. The fresh air, the lovely company. And the donuts. <laughs> Man cannot live on fresh air alone. The usual. No, thank you. Now, remember, Catherine, this is between you and me. No need to get your mother upset over nothing. But if we don't tell Mom about the donut, isn't that right? Well... And lying is bad, right? Lying is bad. Lying to your parents is very bad. But this is not technically a lie. Because we are not telling your mother an untruth. We are just leaving some stuff out and replacing it with a delicious jelly filling. I still don't get it. That's okay, sweetie. Maybe it would help if I demonstrated the whole principle one more time. You don't mind? Of course I don't mind. A good father would do whatever it takes to help his children learn. <clears throat> Sir, another one of your finest jelly donuts. And in conclusion... Finally. I would like to add that for the benefit of ourselves, our children, and our society, we must always be vigilant in our efforts to promote honesty in the media and take personal responsibility for any breaches of the public trust and untruths as they pertain to... That's it? I have a bit of work to do before I deliver this speech tonight. I liked it, Daddy. Thank you, Catherine. Especially the last part. When it finished. <laughs> Ah, your famous... High Fiber Bran Cereal. Ah! Remember, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. This does not bode well for lunch and dinner. Mommy, if breakfast is so important, is it okay for Daddy to eat too? Daddy's on a diet, Catherine. That means he has to eat less, not more. And what better time to start? Might as well conserve my calories now. You never know what kinds of food I'll have to choose from at the benefit tonight. Oh, Arthur, there's plenty to choose from. There's salad. Or maybe a nice, fresh piece of fish. <laughs> you see how it's done, Arthur? Just be sure to make wise choices. Oh, yes, I see. Just remember not to choose any cake. That would be a very foolish choice. Yes, dear, very foolish. So I told her, Linda, come back and talk to me when you've got a clue. You call your mom Linda? We have a very adult relationship. I guess that's why she only grounded you for a month. <laughs> Hello, Ange. Hi, John. Don't encourage him. Angie, I was thinking, do you like movies? Sure I like movies. Everybody likes movies. Yeah, that's right. Me too. Well, I thought that you and I could go together to see the opening of Apocalypse again. It's a sequel to The Last Apocalypse and Return to the Last Apocalypse. Oh, no, he did not. Oh, yes, he did. Darn it, John. I didn't see the first two, so I probably wouldn't be able to follow the story. Thanks, though. Oh, that's no problem. I can tell you what happens. The world ends. Over and over. It would have to end before he gets this day. Oh, smash. Back. Well, the thing is, I totally forgot. I have to wash her dog. Her hair. That's right. I have to wash my dog's hair. Sorry. <laughs> right. I get it. See you around. Lupron, 
what you're letting you go to? Yeah, they said I was close enough to 13. That's just great. Now I'm literally the only kid in this entire school whose parents won't let him see a PG-13 movie. Tough break, Roy. It's going to be a great flick. Ah! How's it going, Roy? Why are you talking to me? Why shouldn't I talk to you? Because you're 16. Usually when a 16-year-old talks to you, you're about to lose your money, your lunch, or your shoes. Not today. Today I come to help you gain something. I couldn't help but overhear your predicament, and I'd like to offer my assistance. Uh, I can help you. That is, if you really want to see that movie. Of course I do, but my parents will never let me, and I can't just lie to them. Did I say anything about lying? The secret is in how you ask them. I can teach you. You can? Of course. Roy, it's about time you learned the fine art of the double dip. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. Hi, Mom. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Hi, Roy. How was school today? Um. Great, I learned at least one new thing today. 22, 23, great. Well, are you on your way home? I'm sure you've got some homework to do. Uh, well, actually, I did it all already. And I was wondering if it would be okay if I went to the movies tonight. 4, 25, you did it already. Well, I guess that might be okay. 26, 27. Thanks, Mom. Hold it. Who are you going with? John Kurtz. Who's he? Uh, 28, 29. He's a friend of Angie's. A friend of Angie's? And what are you going to see? I told you, a movie. 30, 31. <laughs> Roy, I'm busy. Please stop playing games with me. What is the rating of this movie? PG. 13. You know what the answer is. Your father and I believe that you should be 13 before you're allowed to see PG-13 movies. Oh, now I've got to start all over again. One, two, three, four. I'm 12 and a half, almost 13. Maybe Dad changed his mind. Your father? What makes you think he's going to have a different opinion? Uh, excuse me. I'll be with you in a second. Can I just ask him, please, Mom? Roy, you know your father is going to have the same answer. You want to ask him, you go right ahead. Well, maybe he could answer my question, too. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. It'll just be one more second. And if he says it's okay, then it'll be okay with you, right? Just let the kid ask him already. Fine. Just please let me get back to my work. Thanks, Mom. You already did the hard part, the dip. Your mom said it was okay. Well, only if it's okay with my dad. Tut tut, Roy. That's the caveat. Suppressing the caveat is essential to the execution of the second dip. Caveat? Hey, isn't that fish eggs? No, Roy. That's the part you're going to leave out, the catch. If you don't mention the catch, then technically you're not lying. Because my mom did say it was okay with her. You're a genius, Kurt. Finally, someone who really understands me. In conclusion, I'd like to add... Dad, do you have a second? Kind of busy right now, Roy. Can it wait? I just need to know if it's okay to go to the movies tonight. Mom says it's okay with her. I need a great ending. <sighs> Something the entire faculty will be talking about tomorrow. So it's okay with you? Now, let me get this straight, son. You already asked your mother if you could go to the movies, and she said that it was okay with her. Yes, sir. Then it's okay with me. It is? Roy, is that all? Because unless you can give me a water cooler ending to this speech, I really need you to go now. What's a water cooler ending? A big finish. How about the end? That always gets my attention. 998, 999, 1,000. Dad said it was okay with him. What's okay with him? He said that I could go to the movies. And you said if he said... But I didn't think he'd actually say yes. Are you sure he said yes? He did. He definitely said yes. And you said... I know what I said. I'm just not sure you're ready for a PG-13 movie. Please, Mom. I'm so ready. I've never been more ready for anything in my life. My middle name is ready. Your middle name is Egbert. But isn't that enough punishment for one lifetime? Please... Okay, you can go. Thanks, Mom! She said yes! They say yes! I can't believe it! I delivered, Roy. Didn't I deliver? I told you I was going to deliver, and I did. Yes, she did, Kurtz. You delivered. So now I want you to do something for me. Yeah, sure, Kurtz. Anything. But what do I have that you want? Angie. Angie? Yes! I want to sit next to Angie at the movie tonight. But how am I going to get Angie to come to the movie? If I knew that, I wouldn't need you. Okay, 
All you have to do is repeat after me. Normal. I will not be able to accompany you to your yoga class on Saturday. Something pressing has come up. And then you could come hang out at my house. Have you lost your mind? Little brother alert. Hi, Angie. Carmel, Sky. What do you want, Roy? I want to take you to the movies. How do you feel about that? Nauseous. Come on, Angie, I'm serious. Let me guess. You want to see Apocalypse again? How did you know? She's psychic. You do know that movie is rated PG-13. You're not allowed to go. Mom and Dad said I could. They did not. They did. When I said that you were going with me. Why would you tell them that? So they say yes. Well, I'm saying no. Forget it, Roy. Please, Angie, help me out. Why would I? You used me so you can get what you wanted. Just like a man. But I have to see this movie. Everyone is going. Please, Angie, I'll do anything. Oh, please. I believe I heard the word anything. I heard it too. Conference. No, 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 no. But Roy, tell them about the yoga. Oh, that's, that's a chance. Okay, Roy, I'll go with you. Oh, thank you, Angie. Thank you. And you'll take my place as mom's partner in her yoga class on Saturday. It's family day. Forget it. Deal is off. Okay. You're lost. Maybe mom and dad will let you rent the movie when you're 18. <laughs> now wait for it. Wait. Angie? Hmm? Okay. Did you say something, Roy? I said I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> the yoga studio's in the mall. It's the one with the big glass wall facing the food court. You know, the place where all your friends hang out. Okay, let's review the rules. Again? I will turn around and go home right now. Number one, during the movie, I can't put my feet up on the seat in front of me. Number two, I can't slurp my drink. Three, I can't burp. Four, if I feel the urge to pick my nose, I must leave the theater and do it in the lobby or find an equally safe place to do it far away from you. And? And you like your popcorn with extra butter and salt. Can we please get on with this? Oh, no. I just had a scary thought. What if I run into that creepy John Kurtz? I am not in the mood. Kurtz? Good old John Kurtz? He's not that bad. First of all, he's smart. Maybe the smartest guy I've ever met. Well, if I needed someone to take the SATs for me, he'd be the first on my list. Plus, you can't deny that he's compact. You know, he doesn't take up a lot of room. And, uh, he's in the same grade as you. And he's very persistent. He knows what he wants and he gets it. I guess that might be a good thing, if he wanted something other than me. And so, in conclusion, I say to you, my fellow crusaders for truth in media, that we must never give up, that we must never back down, that we must persist, and that we will prevail. <laughs> to serve the cake. But only when and only if we succeed in making personal responsibility the media catchphrase of the new millennium. The end! Thank you. That's very... Uh, excuse me, could you bring me a piece of cake, please? You have a piece, but I'd like another. Are you certain that you need it? Mister, I have never been more certain of anything in my life.
years and hopefully remember none of this. And so the prince and the princess lived happily ever after. And do you know why they lived happily ever after? Because they loved each other, silly. And because the prince was smart enough to know that the princess was always right. I see you're familiar with that story. It's the story of my life. Smart prince. Why don't you go on upstairs and brush your teeth, sweetheart, and then you can come back down for your goodnight kisses. Okay, Mommy. Oh, Arthur, they grow up too fast. Since when do you think it's okay for Roy to see PG-13 movies? I don't. Then why did you say he could go? Because he said that you said that he could go. Well, I only said that because he said you said... Hmm. The old double dip. I think it's time for Roy and me to have a little talk. Why did you just leave? He tried to put his arm around me. How was the movie? It was great. We left in the middle. You left in the middle for no reason. No reason? I had creepy Kurtz trying to crawl into my lap the whole time. Would you stop exaggerating? <coughs> exaggerating? I said... Your father wants to say something. Roy, Angie, I think it's time for us to have a serious talk. You two are growing up fast, and there will be temptations that you will find hard to resist. Oh, gross! Can I go? I've already had the sex talk. You have? Mm-hmm. Well, then we don't have to cover that information again right now. Actually, I have a couple of questions. Not now, Roy. The temptation I was referring to is the temptation to lie. Roy, true or false? Tonight you saw your first PG-13 rated movie. True. True or false? Neither your mother nor I believe you are ready for a PG-13 movie. True. But you said... Ah, 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 that's the truth. Now, let's move on to the false. Lie number one. You told me that your mother said it was okay for you to go. When it most certainly was not. Lie number two. You told her that I said it was okay for you to go. You did say it was okay. Only if your mother had already said it was okay, which she had not. Yes, she had. But only if your father agreed. Which she did. I did not. And he told me that you told him that I had to go with him too. Lie number three. It was all Kurtz's idea. He said that he could help me. He said that it wasn't really lying. And why would this boy want to help you, Roy? To get to me. John Kurtz wanted me to go with him to the movies today. And what did you say? <laughs> I told him I couldn't go because I had to wash Guinness's hair. Aha! Uh -huh. Another liar! Yeah! Aha! Uh -huh. Well, what was I supposed to do? Tell him the truth? Is that a rhetorical question? What if the truth hurts someone's feelings? You always said if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. How many times have your mother and I talked to you about lying? Well, uh, apparently not enough. So, to drive the point home, you're both to stay in your rooms until your mother and I have retired and moved to Florida. Sorry. Roy, do you understand that what you did was wrong? You may not have told an untruth, but by leaving out a part of the truth, you misled us. And that's the same thing. Remember, liars never prosper. I'm just sorry your little sister had to witness this, this fiasco. Me too. It's confusing. Of course, baby. I can understand that a situation like this must be perplexing to you. Let me try to explain it. You see, Angie... Oh, I understand the part about Angie. She lied, but Roy only left some stuff out, just like Daddy did this morning about the donut. Donut? What donut? <laughs> Going to bed now. Good night, mommy. See you in the morning, daddy. I hope. Wait for me. Wait for me too. But dear, <laughs> man cannot live on fresh air alone. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. All right, Norma. Here's what happened. We were walking through the park this morning, and Catherine made me do it. How was the benefit? Fine. I felt a connection with my audience. Cut to the chase, Arthur. What did you eat? Oh, you know how horrible the food is at these functions. I barely touched my dinner. What I'd like to know is, did you touch any of the dessert? Tell the truth. Did you have a piece of cake? <laughs> no. I can honestly say that I did not have one piece of cake at that benefit tonight. Well, I'm happy to hear that. If you're happy, then I'm happy. 
Good night, darling. Well, dear, if you didn't have one piece of cake, exactly how many pieces did you have? I love you, Norma. Thank you.